Hey everyone, so this is video number three in my Leap Into Fusion Mineral Paint 29 video series. Tonight we'll be painting a chalk board out of an old quarter um, wood piece that I bought from St. Vincent de Paul and it's got like a cardboard art piece on top of a piece of wood I'll show you here in a second. But first I wanted to take a moment and introduce myself. Uh, I realized I didn't do this in any of the other videos and I suppose strangers or people who aren't aware of who I am may potentially be watching this. My name is Kate Lefebvre and I'm the owner of Rehome in Ishpeme, Michigan. We refurbish and repurpose old items, um, redo old furniture, and one thing that I love is fusion mineral paint and I sell it at two antique shops locally. One is Main Street Antiques in downtown Ishpeming and one is uh, Northwest Station Antiques at the corner of Wright and Presque Isle in Marquette. We sell a lot of paint and we love fusion mineral paint and I'd love to make sure that we can keep it around here. So one way I'm spreading the word about how much I love this paint is by doing this video series to show you uh, all the different projects can, that can be done with this paint. So tonight I am feeling kind of professional because I got myself a tripod and I'm going to tilt the camera down onto my project and we'll get going. So here we go. Oh, okay. So as you can see, this is uh, a piece probably from, I'm guessing, maybe the 70s. I don't know. I remember them being around when I was a kid. That's about when I was born. Um, it's got a wood frame, and then this is like a cardboard. I thought it would make a pretty good uh, chalkboard surface. So I just dropped my sandpaper. I'm going to grab it real quick, and we'll get going. So tonight, I'm going to use the coal black, and this is for the chalkboard surface. And I'm going to use Seaside which is a beautiful, um, real strong blue, but it's got a hint of uh, turquoise in it. Obviously me, I love turquoise. And I wanted to make sure that I came out with my favorite brush. This is the folk art brush that I talk about all the time. They're my fav favorite brushes. They um, make the surface of the paint really nice and smooth and eliminate a lot of brush marks. So the first thing I always do is lightly sand a surface just to make sure that um, anything is cleaned off or stuffed up it doesn't need this is not something that's going to be touched a lot like a kitchen chair or a coffee table um, so I'm not really worried about getting it sanded really well I did sand it a little bit before I started this and what I'm gonna do first is work on the frame because that is the I'm not worried about getting any blue paint on the black part because we're gonna be painting it anyway I literally am down to the bottom of this paint and I'm not at all concerned about um, being able to get this project done because this paint goes amazingly far. Making sure that we're showing you how well it goes on. So this paint, again, I chose a color that goes on really well and one of these nights I'm gonna choose um, one of the colors that's a little bit more difficult to get coverage from because Seaside is one of the colors that's notorious for beautiful coverage immediately. So I'm gonna get this painted really quick. I'm actually going to distress this piece. So um, I'm not really worried about getting it perfect because I'm gonna sand some of it off anyway. So see how I am only doing a few brush strokes in um, one spot at a time. I'm trying not to overwork this paint. I want to make sure that the surf that it's nice and smooth. And actually, I did a few more than the typical two or three, one or two or however many. I try to do as few as possible. This is a little bit more difficult because I'm realizing I'm getting multiple directions here. Now, looking at this surface, I'm shocked to say, um, this is definitely a one coat only on this frame. I would, if I, this was a piece of furniture that was gonna be used multiple, you know, 
with more of a heavy usage, I would definitely put a second coat on just for the main reason of durability. A couple coats is a lot more durable than one coat. But for a little chalkboard, I'm not really concerned about um, the durability because I'm gonna distress it number one and it's um, not gonna get really touched that often. So now that's paint on wood. Very simple, uh, very easy to do. And now we're gonna use the black. And again, I barely used any of this paint. It's like a little teeny bit of the paint is gone from the jar. One jar goes really far. Uh, we used, I think it was Homestead Blue on a dining set for the mom prom donation last year. And we got four dining chairs, a bench, and a buffet, and we still had paint left in the container. So, trying to get as close to the edge as possible. You know, probably someone else might wait for this to dry and then um, tape off and paint it carefully, but eh, I'm just playing, so. If you were really concerned about getting a nice straight line or a clean edge, you could wait for it to dry, I don't know, an hour or so, and then you could use some painter's tape and it wouldn't take the paint off the surface. So as you can see in the video here, we are getting really good coverage with this black and blue. This surface that I'm painting is kind of like a cardboard like surface a smooth cardboard and the paint is going on really well i'm actually finding i'm at the bottom of the container of fusion miller paint and it's getting a little bit thick which makes it a little bit difficult to work with um because it doesn't spread as easily but that's okay i'm not really if i was starting a brand new project and you know a nice um dining set or something that wasn't a craft, I would probably not use a container of paint that's been sitting around for a while like these ones there. Once they get down to the bottom, sometimes um, it gets a little bit thick and it's a little bit harder to spread. Or I'd use it maybe for my first coat, but just to use up the paint, or you can also add just a little bit of water because it is a water-based paint um, and thin it out a little bit. So I'm noticing if you can see that when I um, keep going back over this black paint, I'm getting kind of some yucky brush marks in it because I'm not allowing this first coat to dry. We got pretty good coverage in the first coat of this. And the black is just getting a little bit old, so it's a little thicker and harder to spread. But that blue covered amazingly well in one coat. So now, I'm going to actually stop the video and I'm going to blow dry this so we can speed the drying process along so I can get that second coat on. And yes, I did say I was going to be blow drying it. I have my blow dryer out so I can give it a little shot of warm air and speed up the drying process. Um, I got it nice and dry to the touch so I'm gonna work on my second coat here. Like I said, probably should have added a little bit of water to this black paint just to make it a little bit easier to spread but sometimes you just use what you have and get the project done. I'm listening to Brene Brown's um, Daring Greatly again. It's a book that I feel like has done me a lot of good and one of the quotes that I heard today was um, what's is, is it better to be perfect or done? And so it's like, is that not true? Just sometimes get something done instead of having it haunt you because you're a perfectionist and want it done perfectly. So 
sometimes when you're working, when I'm working on some of these painting projects, I find that, you know, I'm not happy with exactly how it's turning out, but if I just keep going and get it done instead of putting it aside and worrying about the finished product, I tend to, because I am a perfectionist, I tend to not get the project done because I've been waiting um, to find the, and look, I just painted on the black on the blue paint. So I'm trying to make sure that this black paint is nice and smoothly on and I'm not, one thing that does amaze me about this paint is how fast it dries. Even though I did hit this with the blow dryer, it still is amazing how quickly this paint dries. Um, it's only been a couple of minutes and this blue brush is already starting to get kind of um, hard because it's been sitting. So if you are going to walk away from your brushes, I always keep like a Ziploc bag or even a Walmart bag around so that if I am not going to be using my brush for a minute and truly like a couple of minutes, I cover them up so that they don't dry out because this paint does dry really fast and it's difficult to um, then get back to painting quickly if my brush is hardened and I have to go get it in water and then I actually have to go find another brush. Even though I have probably a hundred brushes, sometimes I don't know where they are because I have brushes in every corner. Because when I feel like painting, I wanna be able to paint. I don't wanna to have to look for um, paint brushes and supplies. Okay. So, isn't it crazy? I did a chalkboard in what was that? I don't know, a total of about 12 minutes or something. I'm going to touch up this edge right here. So you can see those brush marks, but you know what? After it's dry, I'll show you how we prime it with chalk and it's a chalkboard. So you can use the Jaminder paint to make a chalkboard. Okay, so the surface is now dry. I hit it with the um, hair dryer again to encourage the drying time to go by a little bit quicker. And I wanted to just show you how I distress something. Um, I like to be gentle in my distressing just a little bit to add character. So I'll, you can see in the video here, there's all these little dips in the wood, little decorative edging. And I'll just gently run my sander along the edges in both directions until the desired amount of distressing occurs. Um, what I like to do is distress where you would naturally already be hitting a piece so along the edges along the um parts of the trim that are you know naturally on the spot that you would hit if you were to rub it on your own or rub it if you were going by so as you can see I've got just a light distressing there with fusion mineral paint you want to distress within the first 24 hours or so because it does dry incredibly hard. And I painted my dining room table um, and wasn't able to distress it because I waited a few days by hand. I would have had to get my power sander out. So I decided ah, it wasn't worth it. So I'm gonna also just try to lightly sand the black just to smooth it out a little bit. And the joy of making a chalkboard is that um, you don't have to worry about how smooth and pretty the brush lines are on the surface because when you make a chalkboard with any chalk paint or any chalkboard paint, any type of paint, you still need to prime it with a piece of chalk. And priming it with a piece of chalk means that you take and you go over the whole surface 
with the side of the chalk and scratch the entire thing. If you don't do that on a chalkboard that you make, um, you will end up being able to see the little scratches from whatever you wrote first for the entirety of that surface. So you rub the whole surface with the piece of chalk and then I take, this is this old um, dish towel and I lightly wipe it off. And then you can see that I got um, some chalk dust on my paint surface. I just wipe off the, I'm whipping the lids to my paint on the floor and I'm wiping off the um, dust. Now, once you do that and you prime the entire surface, you can actually take a wet rag and wipe off the chalk dust and you don't have to worry about ruining that, but you're essentially scratching the entire surface. Charlotte, did you take my chalk? The dog took my chalk. I'll be right back. Oh my goodness, see, this is what I get for trying to make a video at home with um, my two favorite little children, my puppy dogs. So, wipe that off. I like leaving a little bit of dust on a chalkboard surface because it makes it look like it's you know, actually a chalkboard. But once you do that and it's dry, then we'll write on here with chalk. mineral paint chalkboard made from a quarter old 1970s um, cardboard wood art piece and I did that in less than 20 minutes I used my blow dryer it's all dry to the touch did a little distressing and I'm gonna tilt it up so that you can see my face again and look at that chalkboard how cute is that? Simple, quick. I have hundreds of these little pieces to get done and I'll get at least 29 of them done this month because all these videos will be taken care of this month. I'm just not with it tonight, but we're just going to go with what I have because you're seeing me at my finest. Thursday evening after a long work week, one more day to go. I'll make it. Uh, remember, if you comment in the comments, either on Instagram or Facebook, with what color I use for the project. Remember, I used um, Seaside and Coal Black today. Go to Facebook, go to Instagram, wherever you follow me, and put a comment on the um, post where I put the link to the video. And you'll have a chance to win a $50 gift certificate to buy yourself some Fusion Mineral Paint on February 29th. I'll be doing that drawing. So... Thank you for your patience tonight. I'm a terrible videographer this evening. It's been a long week and I'm ready for uh, the weekend to come, but uh, I'm starting a huge cabinet project this weekend using the color Pebble. So I'm sure I'll be taking you along there because that will be at least one of my videos. I'll show you some cabinets that we're gonna be painting and we're gonna be adding some trim work to make some shaker cell doors. I'm really excited to start this project. I've also got a dining set that I'm gonna be uh, picking up on Saturday morning so we can start that project and I'm sure you'll be seeing those chairs too. Thanks for watching, talk to you soon.